Christos Anesti, today on Saturday, May 13th, we commemorate the holy martyr Clicaria, as well as Sergius the Confessor, Alexandros the Martyr, Posikakos, the Bishop of Sminda. Regarding Saint Clicaria, the Virgin Martyr of Heraclea, this martyr contested in, 14, in 141 in Trajanopolis of Thrace during the reign of the Emperor Antonius Pius. At a heathen festival, when Sabine, the governor of Trajanopolis, was offering sacrifice, Saint Clicaria entered the temple and declared herself to be a handmaid of Christ. Sabine commanded her to sacrifice. She went to the statue of Zeus and overturned it, dashing it to pieces. She was subjected to many horrible tortures and finally was cast to wild beasts. Bitten once by one of them, she gave up her soul in the hands of God. O Lord Jesus, unto thee thy lamb doth cry with a great voice. O my bridegroom, thee I love, and seeking thee I now contest, and with thy baptism and crucified and buried, I suffer for thy sake, that I may reign with thee. For thy sake I die, that I may live in thee. Accept me offered out of longing to thee as a spotless sacrifice. Lord, save our souls through their intercessions, since thou art great in mercy. The readings are from the week, for the fourth Saturday after Pascha, from the Acts of the Apostles. At about that time, Herod the king laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. This is St. Jacobus, the brother of John the theologian. This is not the Jacobus who is the first uh, bishop of uh, Jerusalem, who is a uh, half-brother to the Lord. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in a prison and delivered him four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. The very night when Herod was about to bring him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and sentries before the door and were, that were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Wrap your mantle around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they passed through the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened to them of its own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street. And immediately the angel left him. And Peter came to him and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people who were expecting. This shows us that when we are doing the work of the, God, of the Lord, God will not allow his will to be thwarted. From the Gospel according to St. John, the Lord said to the Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How is it that you say, You will be made free? So sometimes perhaps the most deceptive chains are the ones that we put on ourselves. Of course, the chains of death, the chains of sin. Jesus Christ is going to make us free of these things. And further, he says that if you continue my word, you are truly my disciples. In other words, to continue in the word of God, which means to love people, to, to follow the commandments. It is not just to be a free-for-all to do whatever we want, but to follow Christ. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father, meaning the devil. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You do what your father did. They said to him, we were not born of fortification. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded and came forth from God. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. 
So Jesus Christ is showing this dichotomy between the powers of the world, which is of the devil, and of him, which is of heaven. And Jesus Christ is talking about Abraham not as this uh, historical figure, which they are, but with personal knowledge. Jesus Christ knows Abraham, knows him well. And Abraham is our father, not out of blood, but out of faith. We are children because of faith. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.